Hey guys, um, just doing a little work on R2. Uh, if you saw any of the videos where he was taking these first steps, you'll see there's a few issues I've got to work out. One is the drive shafts uh, and the sprockets keep coming loose no matter how tight I do up the grub screws and um, thread lock them as well. So I've got to think of a, a fix for that. And the other main problem I have with moving is because I've just got a single but large caster in the front wheel. Uh, obviously you can't have anything too big because it's got to be able to spin 180 degrees in there, oh, sorry 360 degrees in there. Um, and if they're too small then you'll have trouble going over little little steps and curbstone, you know, little um, un uneven ground, that sort of stuff. So um, the problem I was having is with the one caster the foot tends to, if you're going backwards, tends to pull down and then just, uh, it's almost like it's putting a brake on and if you go forward it sort of wants to tip that way obviously with two wheels it will find its own level um, but with these metal parts um, it's always slightly toe up I've noticed and I think that's because these were made for the version with the extended outer legs I'm assuming which would correct the angle because you can have extended legs and extended rocket boosters as well anyway the real problem I had was this thing moving because it's a hinge and no matter how tight you do those bolts through the centre there, uh, it still eventually it works its way loose uh, and the more you move him the more it works loose. So um, I was having a bit of a think and one of the guys, Giles, thank you very much Giles, uh, in the club suggested this um, and what he's actually, what all I've done, I've taken his suggestion, it was a good one, simple one, is I've drilled two, f two holes through here, they're five mil holes, they go through this and then they go straight through here so you've got the bolt goes in at the top and then you've got the nuts there and there. So there's two of them and they're absolutely holding that ankle dead solid and it won't move. It would have to snap two bolts, two M5 bolts to move. So that should solve that one. Um, obviously in the future if I try it with the two wheels, two smaller wheels, the bolts can just be removed and it's back to flexible again, although obviously there'll be some holes. but. I think most of the time it's just going to be absolutely rigid because the more it moves the more complications it causes basically. So um, yeah just a little tip, two M5 bolts just drill straight through the bottom of the ankle, through the top of the foot and uh, just tighten them up and there you go. It's like two big 5mm steel pins through there so it's not going to go anywhere. Hi there, doing a bit more on R2 this morning. A um, couple of jobs I'm doing. One is just finishing off with the centre foot. Uh, that's now been locked, as I started to show you in the last video, I've now locked that in place. Um, you can't see them now, but basically I've drilled a hole through here on both sides and there's an M5 bolt going through, which literally bolts the two together. So there's no way that ankle's now going to move unless it can shear two 5mm bolts. Um, Put the side plates on because the side plates you can't access once you've put my um, my block on there. That's the block that I 3D printed to support the, um, the caster. Uh, and that's pretty much it for that bit. But while I've got it off, I decided to change the battery plate. What I had before is I had four of those holding the foot on um, through the battery plate. But that meant I had four of these sticking up which interfered with the battery so what I've just done is I've taken it back out to the shed and countersunk all of these so now that's the same quarter UNC, quarter by 20 UNC bolt now it'll be nice and flat so the battery won't be sitting up balancing on four sharpish or four um, you know, little studs that wouldn't be a good idea. So I'll reassemble that now and show you what it looks like. Okay, just so you can get a chance to see what it looks like underneath. Um, that's basically what we've got. So I've put the battery holder back in place. I'm going to 3D print some new top parts for this so I can have different size and shape batteries. That's one of the next plans. But you'll see now that those are nice and flush. They're not tightened up yet because I've left them loose. And then those are just going to locate in those four holes there. Okay, so centre foot back on, all the adjustments done that I wanted to do and as you can see I've now got a nice flat plate there for the bottom of the battery so they're not going to sit up on the heads of bolts. So um, that's that little job complete.
Okay, so I'm doing a bit of work on R2 this morning, um, trying to solve a little issue that I'm not too keen on. Uh, these motors uh, and the gearing is superb. Uh, in fact, I've got to alter all the speed settings and the speed controller to slow him down. Um, but there's still so much torque and so much acceleration that he literally, if he if he's in anything other than the, the minimum speed, if you stick him into forwards quite uh, too quickly, he'll actually lift his front wheel. And likewise, when he comes to a stop, he'll sort of want to flip over backwards if uh, you know if he's going backwards. So <clears throat> there's various ways of locking these ankles. Um, one idea I had was to try and put a bolt through here somewhere in there. But it's not going to be particularly easy, especially without taking it all to pieces. So I got this idea from one picture I saw on the internet, um, and I've just for the time being I've just got some aluminium strip, and what I'm going to do I've, I've basically bent it to the right angle, and the idea is to slip that in there and have it act as a, a brace or even a spring, bit of a, a sort of suspension type spring. Uh, obviously I can paint it uh, white so you don't see it too much I want to get it as close into that ankle as possible um, and I might as well use the same two fixing holes so I'm going to make a paper template or a cardboard template get me uh, measurements correct and then give it a go the only thing I can't do is get a more uh, there's always a bit of a rounded uh, edge on that bend I'd like to be able to get that a bit more um, pointed but we'll see I'll let you know how we go. So I've just done a good old-fashioned um, I don't know what do they used to call them uh, rubbings when you put a bit of paper over something and you use a pen and or a pencil and you just sort of scrape over it until you reveal the pattern so anyway, I'm going to use that as a template to cut to length and drill the holes. Okay so I've made up that little bracket to put in there, it's not cut to, to final size yet, but it's just a strip of aluminium, one inch wide, a couple of mil thick, and I've just bent it to shape and I've used the same bolts that hold the foot drive on to trap it in. Uh, and I'm about to give it a quick test. Now forgive me because I'm holding the camera with the left hand and trying to drive with the right hand alone. Um, so if I bring him out where there's a bit of space, So now, if I can try to keep the camera on the feet, when he spins now, he no longer tries to lift the ankle. Now sometimes, he was before lifting the ankle. Let me put him up to the next speed. This is quite quick. It does seem to help. Sometimes you see he tries to almost do a handbrake turn if I tell him to turn too aggressively. There, see that lifting the ankle there? See that right, that left foot? It's lifting that whole foot up. But if I do that with the other one, it doesn't lift anywhere near so much. So I think on the whole, yeah, again, you can see. That's what I'm trying to solve. That, that lifting of that foot. See if we can go on to the fastest setting. Whoa. Sorry, Satine. Whoa. That's, that's the problem I've got. That's just... <laughs> I've just got to lock these ankles. He's uh, too powerful and talky for his own good at the moment. Luckily the turn speed, I was forgetting, the turn speed is actually set so the turn speed doesn't change as I um, increase or decrease the, the the three geared speeds, if you see what I mean. So I'd have to accelerate slowly, more like that. Whoa! So it helps that bit there. I'm going to cut it down. You can see it doesn't look quite right there, but uh, 
it does help it's not salted completely but you can see there the two the two um, the two legs the two feet rather sorry I'm trying to multitask which is why I'm talking slowly uh, but yeah you, you can see the way you can see the way the feet are moving and you can see the right foot's moving up less than the left poor old R2 can I have a cup of I need one even if you don't it's hard to it's hard to film and drive at the same time I'm going to stop now okay uh, so now I've got that uh, uh, mechanical stuff sorted out uh, it's down to the code and the electronics at the moment he's still just a little bit uh, I'm not quite happy with the speed uh, that he accelerates and decelerates and he's turning quicker than he goes forwards so I've loaded up this is the Arduino sketch actually that uh, controls it so I can make some changes I've just plugged the uh, <clears throat> laptop into the Arduino Mega and I can change some of the settings so I'm going to have a go at that now and then I'll show you how the um, uh, show you what the difference it makes No, no more of that artist. 